SS3. This work is being taught according to the Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council, that is the NERDC curriculum. And first, I'll be telling you about the benefits of studying biology. First, it gives you the awareness of the environment. It makes you conscious of what happens in the environment. Then also it helps you to know the roles and the functions of other components of the environment aside you or your species like other human beings. You know the roles and functions of other components, both plants and animals of the environment. Also, you get to know about yourself, your body, the components of your body, the functions, what you should take, how to take care of your body, what you should look out for when you have a particular symptoms and the like, what, how to take care of yourself. Then, also about your hygiene, your cleanliness, prevention and control of diseases. So, it, it, it is all encompassing. Then, we will be talking about the courses you can do with biology. First, you can do biology education, just as I'm doing now, you educate, you learn biology in the university and you can teach others to biology. You can learn botany, that is plant science. You can learn zoology, animal science. You can do microbiology, when we talk about microorganisms that affect you and other organisms in the environment. You can do biochemistry. Agriculture and its related courses, animal science, plant science, agri biology, and the rest. Every course related to agri biology will help you. Then, medicine. I know many people want to be doctors, so you can do medicine, you can do dentistry, that is the study of the teeth, you can do pharmacy, drugs, and it's everything that relates to that. Then, Nutrition and dietetics, biology will help you to know the right food, to study that course relating to food and the health of people. Then food and nutrition also related to that. Then environmental management, to know about the environment, how to keep our environment safe and sane for us. Then the available jobs with biology. First, medical doctor, when you study medicine, you can help others with their health. Then researcher, you can just get into the laboratory, get to find out more things, you know. What I will be teaching you are the findings of some people who went to field, went to lab and discovered these things. So you can discover some other things that are deeper than what I will be teaching you. Then you can be a botanist when you study your study plant science, you can be a zoologist studying animal science. Veterinary medicine is also there when you deal with animals. You can do dentistry. You can be a dentist when you do dentistry, dietitian, you can be a lecturer at their institution, you can be a teacher at secondary school level, you can be a microbiologist or a lab science technician, testing people's blood, x ray and things related to that. You can be a pharmacist, agriculturist and the like. So biology is a very wide topic that give you vast opportunities of courses and jobs that you can do with it. So in this SS3 biology, I want to intimate you with the scheme of work, what we'll be looking at. And we have just three things, on like we have in SS1 and 2, that we had four things. There is no team 1 in SS3 work. So we'll be starting with the team 2, the organism at work. So we have regulation of internal environment, nervous coordination, sense organs. Then on that team 3, We'll be looking at the organism and its environment, and another that we'll be looking at ecology of population and balance in nature. Then for team four, that's where we have the bulk of the work. That's continuity of life. We'll be looking at reproductive systems in humans. We'll be looking at development of new seeds. We'll be looking at fruits. Looking at reproductive behaviors. Then biology of heredity. That's genetics. Variation and evolution, then on the final note, we look at evolution. So that's what we'll be covering in this class, this SS3 class of biology. And the first topic in, that we'll be looking at is the regulation of internal environments. The regulation of internal environments.
The infernal environment is referred to as the immediate surroundings of the cell. The immediate surrounding of the cell is what is referred to as the internal environment. So we want to look at how the cell balance cell foods, the immediate surrounding, that is the internal environment. Then homeostasis is the mechanism by which organisms maintain a constant internal environment within an external environment that can change. How you can how there can be a balance between the internal environments of an organism, despite the fact that the external environment is subject to change. That is what we call homeostasis. And the constancy of the internal environment is vital for cells to continue their functions. So the constancy that is the balance in the internal environment affects or is vital, is critical for cells to perform very well their roles. Then they will be looking at the organs that will be that will that function or that are responsible, that act in this maintenance of balance. And the first is the kidney. The kidney is responsible for excretion. When we learned that in the SS2 biology when we talk about excretion. So kidney is responsible for excretion, but as well it is an osmoregulatory organ that is it maintains balance between the cell and its external environment. The, the composition of the blood determines the reabsorptive activities of the kidney. Casting your mind back, we you look at the various ways that kidney works. We talk about urine formation, the absorption activity. That is, if the kidney is one after excretion has occurred to a particular stage, the kidney reabsorbs some nutrients, some food and particles like glucose back into the blood. So the composition of the blood, the content of the blood determines the reabsorption activities of the kidney. Also, the osmotic pressure of the blood, as well as water and salt reabsorption, are influenced by hormone. So, the reabsorptive activity of the kidney is not only determined by the composition of the blood, but also by the osmotic pressure of the blood, then the salt and water the, the, the activity of hormone also determine the reabsorptive activity of the kidney. So the blood compo composition and also some hormones are responsible for how the kidney reabsorb salts and water into back into the blood system or into the body system. The osmoreceptor cells are the base of the pituitary gland in the hypothalamus of the brain. In the brain, we have hypothalamus, then we have the pituitary gland there. So, and it is located at the back, towards your neck. That's where we have the hypothalamus. So they are sensitive and are stimulated by a rise in the osmotic pressure of the blood, especially when the blood becomes dehydrated on a dry day. So the this osmoregulation, you know the body, every part of the body is connected to the brain. So the, the brain is the one that sends signal to the body when there is dehydration. For instance, when the weather is hot, you are, everywhere is dry, the body is taking up more water, you are taking up more salt. So the hypothalamus of the brain is one that is sensitive and is, is stimulated by a rise in the osmotic pressure of the blood. Then when these receptors are stimulated, the hormone is released and conveyed via the bloodstream to the kidney, where it causes the nephron to re increase the reabsorption of water. I said when the weather is dry, you know, it's, your body will, will be dry too because the rate of evaporation of water is high. So what happens is that there will be a signal that will be sent from the brain to the kidney that it should increase the rate at which water is being lost by the body. 
So more water will be reabsorbed back into the system. So it means that your, the urine will be more concentrated. It's covered that when, for instance, even when the weather is not so dry, you, you don't take enough water. You discover that your urine will be colored, will be more yellowish than when you take enough water. So, and what makes it so is that the, the, the kidney is reducing the amount of water that is going to lose since the water is not even enough. So it will reduce it on like when there is a balance. Let's say that the quantity of water that you should take in a day is 4 liters. And you have the 4 liters in the blood. And the quantity that urine is to take is about 1 liter. For example, I'm just using that hypothetical example. The urine you are, going, you are supposed to release in a day is just 1 liter. When you take 4 liters. But now, you just took only 2 liters or 2.5 or even maybe 1. You don't expect the body to give away the whole one liter. So the kidney is the one that...